the reason we're cooking it at 200 and it'll cook for hours until it's brown is uh, I want to use this beef afterwards. I'll pick it off the bone, toss the bones away, and keep the beef for a stew or a soup. And if you cook beef, particularly grass-finished beef, which is what this is, low and slow, you'll get uh, a tenderer product. All the, and the reason it needs to be browned is because this brings out the flavor of the beef. Okay, so we've gotten our two trays of beef now out of the oven, and we're simply going to load our crock pot, um, and I prefer this to the Dutch oven because then I can do what I call the French maid um, method, which means put it in and forget about it, let the French maid take care of it, don't worry about it. So, I'm going to put some meaty pieces in, and some marrow pieces, great marrow in that one. And let's see, we may be able to fit it all, we may not. Okay, that's about as much as can comfortably fit in this crock pot because we're going to add vegetables as well. I'm going to cover it with water. And this is cool water because we, uh, if you heat it slowly, again, it brings out more of the color and the flavor. Now we're going to add some vinegar and I'm adding about a third of a cup for this pot and the vinegar will help draw the calcium out of the bones and keep it in the broth. And I'm using red wine vinegar. You can use any kind of vinegar. I'm interested in the red wine because of the flavor it adds. You can add white. I have no idea what balsamic would taste like, so I'm reluctant to use it. And I'm going to add vegetables. What vegetables, again, is not terribly important. I'm using vegetables that I know I like in my beef soups and my beef stews. But these will simmer all night with this um, uh, pot, and so the, veg so the celery will come out. The rest will get food processed into the broth. Some onions, I love the taste of onions with beef. Carrots with skins left on to keep their vitamins in because they're going to get pureed into the broth. And you could add tomatoes, but I see I don't have the room. Therefore, I'm going to cover it, and I'll turn it on high. This will take hours to warm up, even to simmering. And when it gets to simmer, you want to turn it down just as low as it will go, because this is going to simmer all night to bring out the flavors of the beef. And, it, and so that the, the meat falls off the bone. As it simmers, it needs to be skimmed. Skimming is the first commandment of good cooks because if you leave the scum on the top, one, it doesn't look very pretty, but two, it, if it gets reabsorbed into the stock, you have extraneous flavors that, that are not going to leave you with the purest tasting beef broth. So, now we put it to bed for overnight and finish it in the morning. So overnight we have simmered our stock and this morning early I got up and cooled it and here's what we have left. We've got the fat taken off, skimmed off the top of the cooled broth. We've got the bones separated from the beef which will be just enough for a wonderful barley beef soup. We've got the stock and we've got the veggies minus the um, celery because we don't want strings in this. The next thing we're going to do is puree the vegetables, which is a quick whirling And we're going to add a bit of the stock to it to begin to incorporate the stock. Woo! 
That keeps all of the vitamins and minerals of the vegetables in with our concoction. We're going to combine it all in a large container. with all of the stock liquid. The beef gets put aside for a soup or a stew. The fat and the bones with all of their wonderful fat and connective tissue go, in our case, to the chickens. And what we have left is the stock with all of its health benefits. Now, if you would like to add something extra for both the taste and the upscaling of your stock, you can reduce a couple of cups of wine to a syrup by putting in your couple of cups of red wine and boiling it until it's become a syrup and then add it to your stock. This is purely for taste. It has nothing to do with your health benefits. It doesn't detract from them. The alcohol is gone. But um, this is an absolutely optional step. Get all of the veggies mixed in, all of the wine mixed in, and now you have a rich beef stock. This made 11 cups of, of, of stock, which we will put into 11, I'm sorry, it made 11 quarts of stock, which we will put into quart bags. If your family is large, you may want to store it in gallon bags. Um, it's up to you. It depends on how your family uses stock. And that's all there is to making beef stock that will keep you healthy through the winter.